Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Science of Mind Lecture Series. I'm your host today, Reverend Elzia, and today we are going to be continuing in our exploration of the Science of Mind textbook. And today the topic is the physical perfection expanded. The physical perfection expanded. So now, this, this part on the physical perfection is going to be a couple of series. And so last week we had uh, Reverend Victoria set the stage. Um, and, and right now we're looking at chapters 14 and 15 in the Science of Mind textbook. And so uh, we want to really get into this idea of physical perfection from the mindset of spiritual mind treatment and the cultivation of our mind and our emotions within ourselves. So that is the key to everything that we do here. And so we come to the understanding that the answer to prayer is the prayer itself. And so when we're looking at physical perfection or physical healing or any kind of healing, mental healing, the first thing we have to understand, and, and, and we're going to start a little bit in chapter 14 to set this stage or reset the stage and move forward. So if you look in your textbook, if you have it with you, and if you don't, uh, grab it or take some notes and you can go do it later. But on page 190, second paragraph, it says, we come to understand then that the answer to prayer is the prayer itself. The belief that one praying sets in motion the law of love, which is the fundamental law of the universe. So the first thing that happens when, when we look at a healing in anything and we look at the perfection of who and what we are, we must open up this doorway into the mindset of God that says we are setting in motion a law of love, which is the fundamental law of the universe, meaning that throughout the universe, the overwhelming foundation that we are dealing with is love. And that when we examine that a little bit further, we understand that love encompasses all things. We've heard these, these things that love encompasses all things, is all things, as all things. Because with love, it has so many splendors. It has so many ways of being displayed that it opens up this doorway for constant communication and allow us to really, uh, to really get at the heart, <laughs> if you will, of the matter. Right, because from love, I don't have any expectations. I don't have any judgment. I don't have any preconceived notion. I am just there as an open vessel to channel through me the fundamental laws of the universe. And so when we look at life and understand what it is, we realize that in reality, life is a spiritual and mental undertaking and that our body or that any condition is an out picturing of that and so when we look to heal things or when we look to establish the perfection of who and what we are we understand that the mind helps set the mental state it helps set the healing state and so when we can when we can realize that and tap into that, we see that the healing in man is more mental than it is physical. Now, let's be real clear, though. Ernie said, we believe in both prayer and the pill, right? We believe in both things. We believe in, in, in the totality of God. And so we don't set any limits on God. And we know that God can be in the prayer, which he always is. And it can be in the appeal, which he always is. Because it is through that mind thought, that creative idea that has moved man to come up with the different medical 
and physical and mental apparatuses to heal. And so we look at man and we look at God as we should always as a wholeness, as, as, a, as a way of uh, 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 establishing a methodology and, 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 and a way of viewing things that produces results. I mean, that's always the telltale sign of anything, right? <laughs> the telltale sign is if you tell me something is effective in a situation, person, place, or thing, I can tell the wholeness of it, the effect that it produced by the perfect that it produces. So, so when we begin to look at this whole idea of healing and the body perfection and the healing and perfection of life, the first and foremost thing I think uh, that we have to take under consideration is that inherently we as creations of the most high are perfect ideas. We were created from a perfect idea in the mind of God as, as they say, a prototype of man, of woman, of earth, of collaboration, of community. There was a prototypical idea that created us, that we were created from. Now, in modern day, the one person who really gave this idea in modern terms a, a, a good foundation for those to, to look at it from a different perspective is Carl Jung, with his old, his, his, his idea, rather, of the collective unconscious and archetypes collective unconscious and archetypes because what he is trying to indicate this collective unconsciousness is the mind of God. It contains all things, whether they are known or unknown. They are in the unconsciousness of man, but they're in the consciousness of God. So let's make that establishment first and foremost. And so when we look at it from the unconscious and the archetypes, Carl Jung said this, that that these archetypes of the perfect man, of the grandmother, of the hero, uh, uh, of the protagonist, of all these different ideas, they rest in the mind of God. And when we create enough thought energy, they materialize. We, we through thought, because we know thought creates, we bring into existence, not bring into existence, that's the wrong word. We bring into physical uh manifestation, let's say, of awareness of these things. And so we come from a perfect idea. And these ideas through time, through the environment, get covered up by our subjective placement upon them, our experience with them. And so we begin to create from this perfect idea, based on our understanding and the environment that we find ourselves in, we begin to create anomalies from the perfection idea. We begin to create uh, deductions from, because we can't understand them, or we don't know how to mentally incorporate them into life itself. And so when that happens, we begin to have disease. We become a little bit uncomfortable at times with certain situations or people or places or things. And, and, and so as a result of that, we become diseased. Now, uh, another foundational point that, 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 that Ernest makes, and it's on, on, on page 197 of the textbook, the second and third paragraph, it reads like this. It says, healing then is accomplished by uncovering, neutralizing, and erasing false images of thought and letting the perfect idea reflect itself through the subjective mind into the body. When one realizes that everything is mine and that nothing moves 
but mine, and that the only instrument of mine is thought, then we will see nothing can permanently not be healed. Everything can be healed if we have right thought. There's nothing that can't be healed. Everything can be healed with right thought. That's whether we create it in prayer alone or we attract through us, through the prayer, the person with the pill or the resetting of the bone or the cultivation of the mind to relieve those kinds of ailments so that we fall back in line with the perfect idea that we were created from. That we were made in the image and likeness of God. And that through right thinking and through current understanding, we begin to know and we begin to understand who and what we are and what God has said about who and what we are. And so there lies, therein lies the work. That is the work for the perfection of man, for the physical perfection of who and what we are. The foundation lies in, number one, as we said, that foundation of the love law, or the law of love. Second is right thinking, the right thought. How do we begin to create a thought pattern, a way of being, a way of understanding, a way of moving in the world that allows us to project our physical perfection? Now, as practitioners, whether you are a licensed practitioner or you just an individual practitioner of the science of mind, the art of praying, right? The practitioner, we are not trying to send out thought or, or to hold thought or, or, or make suggestions. What we are trying to do, we are trying to tap into this perfect idea. We're trying to open up our mind's eye to the perfect idea and the perfect state of ourselves or anyone that we are praying for or any situation that we are praying for. Now, that's a mouthful <laughs> because sometimes we know we can be distracted by appearances. And, and, and Jesus to Christ said this, judge not by appearances. Don't let what you see shift your mind's eye from the perfection that God is, the foundation of all things. So we try to realize the state of perfection of the person, place, or thing so that we can make a difference and that we can differentiate between the suggestion and the actual reality of the physical and mental and spiritual wholeness of what it is. Because you see, in metaphysical healing, we are conscious that we are dealing with this universal law, this universal principle, which takes the impressions from the thought and acts upon it, right? We are dealing with something that, 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 that uh, cannot be argued. Right. We, 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 we don't argue with law. I mean, you can you can argue with the law of gravity or the law of aerodynamics or electricity. But that argument is not going to change the fact that if you jump off the building, the law of gravity will take effect. Or if you stick your hand into an electric socket. You will get shocked. And so in that same manner. When we deal with the perfection of healing, when we deal with this idea of how do we begin to look at the perfection of all things. Now, here we're, we're looking at the perfection of the, of the physical, right? But really, it is the perfection of all things that we're dealing with in this realm, the physical realm. So we don't argue about law. <laughs> we are trying to align ourselves with the perfect idea, the definite purpose 
to do certain things that it does. Right now, let me restate that. So we're trying to align ourselves with these laws so that we become in, in tune with them and then we allow them to do what they do. When I want to fly a, or, or take a flight, I just activate the law of aerodynamics. I don't have to argue with it. I don't have to think about it. All I need to do is put myself in the right position, in the right environment, and establish that principle of aerodynamics, and it will take effect. And it will supersede as long as I keep that principle in alignment, I will supersede the law of gravity and I will fly off the ground. But the moment I become out of alignment, then the gravity will begin to take effect on that airplane or that kite or whatever it is that's flying. So the first thing, again, let's be clear. The first thing that the practitioner must do when we're looking at healing and prayer, the first thing that we must do is separate the belief from the believer or from the thing. We, we have to separate these two because we, as we know, in the beginning, we said we come here with this perfect idea in mind. And then as we have interactions with the world, we begin to uh, create different models of what the world is like. We, we begin to shift the idea of the perfection of who and what we are. And we begin to not see clearly, right? We, we no longer uh, have that uh, blinders on, if you will, that, that, that allows us to see only the perfect idea and operate from that perspective. And so when we begin to separate belief that there is something unperfected, that there is something outside of the law of God, we must separate that and remember that we are embodiments of perfection, that we are embodiments of perfection, which is endowed by everyone through the life-giving principle of the divine. So in our work, we treat, we treat not as a physical body or as a physical situation or as a physical thing. We don't treat for that or pray for that. What we do is we pray for the clearing of our mind to only see the perfection, to only see the perfection. Now, how do we do that? We just said we don't we don't cast thought, we don't hold thought, we don't project thought. So how do we become uh, 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 practitioners who are able to have results in this physical world by using this method of healing? Well, the way we do that is we begin to eliminate all ideas that are not congruent with the perfection of man. Not congruent with the perfection of man. So we don't think of a disease as being connected with the spiritual aspect of man, which is the, the essence of who we are. We know that a physical manifestation, whether it's an intentional thought or a conglomerate of thoughts that come together to create a predominant vibration, are the things that create disease. Now, let's be clear. <laughs> don't we don't need to walk around trying to, you know, be in some box about how we think. We what we need to do is we begin to bring ourselves in alignment with these universal principles of perfection. The universal principles of perfection so that the practitioner begins to realize the perfection of any person place a thing and 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 that's it. That there is nothing to realize uh, uh, in the power and presence of God, but that God is. 
and that life is, and that the only life there is, is the life of God. And by completing into that, we begin to think aright. We begin to shift our thinking beyond appearances, beyond all of the uh, discord we see in the world, all of the, the, the vitriol that we see people exchanging with each other about sometimes things that are not even important, right? So, so we begin to hold that idea in mind. And so now, so just to recap that, so when we look at the physical perfection of anything, whether it's man, your environment, a situation, an exchange, the first thing we have to do is fall in line with the law of love then realize that each and everything on the planet, in the universe, is created from a perfect idea in the mind of God. And that as we come into this physical world from the ethereal world of thoughts and mind and spirit, we begin to lose some, some perception, some awareness, and we begin to cloud certain aspects or or lose certain understandings of who and what we are and why we're here which is to be and we are here to be emissaries of that spirit the most high god to exemplify and exude the unity of love the community of love based on that foundation of sound ideas and so when we when we come here and we we sometimes lose sight of that because we're distracted by all these different things we then must cultivate the mind and hold it steady on the perfection that we are. And when we do that we can begin to understand that answer to that age old question what can be healed. <laughs> and we say Anything and everything can be healed. We, we, we don't set limits on God. There have been plenty of cases where we know that, that um, there have been studies up at Boston University with power of prayer. And we know that it works. We've seen, they've done studies, you know, as they do in science, they've done the double blind studies where they have, these people praying for other people and not for some and the people praying for themselves and they have seen the results, physical results of what happens. And they know that, that, that our thoughts and our emotions can definitely and do definitely affect our health, whether it's physical health or mental health, which also includes our spiritual health in terms of how we see the world, what our outlook is, how we engage with one another. So when we begin to know and remember that our thoughts and emotions create a vibrational field that affects the physical environment, this, this perfection that we're looking for, this understanding of how we engage life and the world we understand that things like fear and negative thoughts and, and, and all of this uh, judgment begins to affect that. Just think for a minute. Just think for a minute when you sincerely had a fear of something or you sincerely had a judgment of someone or something or you 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 criticize someone just just kind of close your eyes or just close your mind's eye and think about how that affected your body i would submit that that you may have started sweating that that if you notice certain parts of your body if not your entire body begin to tense up and we know that when stress or fear or that fight or flight comes into our lives, we know that our heartbeat raises, our breath is affected, our sweat glands are perfected, our blood pressure can go up. And so we know from a scientific perspective, as these different changes 
happen within the body, a temple, we begin to constrict our 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 put and put an impediment in place to keep us from functioning properly. And so when we understand that thoughts and emotions affect us and that when we have these negative thoughts, ideas and emotions that they put constrictions on the body, we know that if we can change the thought, if we can hold a different thought, not look at the negative, then we can begin to bring that body temple back into balance, back into balance. And so one of the ideas and one of the things that help leads to that healthy life, healthy body, healthy mind is the art of forgiveness. The art of forgiveness. You see, because forgiveness means to fully accept something that has a negative effect, but relinquish that feeling and let it go. Let me say that again, because this is key. So forgiveness means to, to accept things as they are in that moment, because we know mind is always changing, and realize that that is just a moment in time. And so I relinquish that negative thought, that negative feeling. And then I began to surround myself in love, in forgiveness, in understanding that all things change. What I thought was real when I was 15 is not what I think is real today, some <laughs> years later. Right. Because I and 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 in some cases I had to forgive myself. In some cases, I had to forgive others. Right. In some cases, I had to change my thinking. I had to reorient my mind to see world in this perfect way. Now, some people might say, well, 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 you know, if we do too much of that, we can become Pollyannish. Well, yes and no, right? I can become Pollyannish if I hold that vision. And I see the reality is not the same and I don't try to match them up, right? If I don't try to, then I'm looking at them Pollyannish. So that means I'm looking at a negative situation and I'm, I'm not making any adjustments, right? But I'm thinking it's still perfection. But what we teach is that we hold this idea, not hold it in the sense of trying to make it happen, but we keep that vision of what life is and we try to align ourselves in that image, in that idea of perfection as we see ourselves moving. We know we, we have the law of polarity, right? There's this law called the law of polarity. That means things are moving along a spectrum, right? And, and that law of polarity causes things to go. And so move. And what we are trying to do is find, as they say, the sweet spot, right? We want the sweet spot, that spot where um, it all lines up and that movement is minimal. That movement with this inner tolerance that keeps everything in balance. It's like, here's an example. Our body temple seeks to keep the 98.6 body temperature, right? That is the that is the ideal perfection of the human body. But we know based on the law of polarity that there's a little movement in that. And so if we go from 98.6 down to 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 97, all right, well, we still okay. Well, if it goes up to, to 99.1, maybe 99.2, all right. A little different, but we in a tolerance. Now, if we start going much beyond that, we start getting up into the hundreds on the temperature. Well, now that's an indication that something is out of alignment. If we go down much below that 97, now we know there's something that is out of alignment. And so what our job is, is to understand this law, understand the tolerance of movement and try to stay within that zone because the world is changing from that unconscious, that collective unconscious, when the conditions are right, it's kind of like rain. I like to look at it as rain. When, when, when the sun is out and it's drawing up the rain, they form clouds. And when those clouds get heavy enough, 
with the moisture, it comes back down to earth. So the vapors go up, they collect, and they come back down as rain. Now, you don't see the vapors, but you do see the rain. So the same idea happens in our lives, that as we send up thought by the way we act, live, think, emotions, and feelings, they begin to create a thought cloud, if you will. And when that thought cloud gets heavy enough, it comes down and manifests in our lives. It manifests in our lives. So let's 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 just be clear that this is the laws of the universe that we're dealing with. And so scripture says this that according to the teachings of the ancient ones, the mind and the body must be kept pure, must be kept single to do the work. Must be kept clear and must be kept single. Let thy eye be single. Because the light of the body is the eye. And so so when we begin to clear our vision and, and begin to discern what is happening from the idea of perfection, then we know what adjustments need to be made. Then we know what adjustments need to be made. And so, so the idea that uh, we must make this alignment, then the question becomes, well, what is this perfect idea? What is this idea that we're trying to hold or trying to visualize to come into alignment when we are in disease? Well, that perfect idea is that this life is God life and that there is no other life but God. Therefore, my life and God's life are one and the same. And we understand that, that God is infinite, however we call it, whatever name we give it. It is an infinite expression of ideas and thoughts and love and, and, and communication. And so that's what we are. And so when we can begin to hold that idea that there are no limits that can be placed on God, we look around the world, we look around the universe, we see all manner of creation. The other day I was looking at a, at a newscast and they found some creature in the ocean that they thought had been exempt, uh, extinct, rather, excuse me, for over a thousand years, I think they said. And now it has reappeared. So there are no limits to be placed on God. And when we can understand that, we move into that alignment. And so uh, we, we go here and, 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 and hold this idea that spiritual mind healing is the idea that we know that there is only one first cause. Spiritual mind healing, physical perfection, whether it's in the body temple or in an environment, comes from the idea that there is only one first cause, God itself, the divine, setting things in motion. But it is often necessary, once we understand that, it is often necessary for us to diagnose the thought that we have created or tapped into that causes us to see things without that single mind, without that single eye. And so we create that we, we, we begin to activate that law of priority and we start moving in life and going from extreme to extreme as opposed to finding that sweet spot. And that sweet spot is God itself. That sweet spot is activated through prayer and right thinking and right action. And when we do that and when we move into that space, all things are possible. We know that thought is constantly changing. We know that there are always new ways of expression. So that's what we lean on. If we're in a bad spot, we know thought is changing. We know there's going to be new evidence to prove or, or acknowledge something different in life or, or give us a different way of looking at it. So it's not possible that anything is permanent or that it remains permanent. It's always changing. It's always changing. And so we must always hold the idea that things are moving in a progressive, positive, constructive way. 
And when we do that, everything around us change. Everything supports that idea because we are a unity, a community of oneness. It's like, a, like, like uh, I forget the, uh, the Native American chief that, uh, that, that made this statement, but he says, we live in the web of life. And what we do to one part of the web affects the whole web. And so when we begin to understand that, that there is no isolated movements, there are no isolated thoughts, there are no isolated actions, everything affects everything else. And so we begin to understand that we must bring alignment. We must bring things into alignment so that we can get to this perfection of man, this perfection of life. So we start with the idea of a perfect God a perfect man, a perfect woman, and a perfect being, that in every case, it is the well-being and the thought of wholeness that begins to remove the doubt, to remove the fear, and to assure ourselves that the one we are seeking is also seeking us. The idea that we're seeking is also seeking us. And so we look for that harmonious moment where we are in alignment, where we are together as one in mind, body, and spirit. That's what we look for. That's what this world is based on. Now, we've been going for a little while here, so I'm not sure if anyone has any questions or, or uh, has a statement to make. I'm going to pause for a moment and, and, and allow that to to take place if someone has that. And if not, uh, I will keep moving. And hopefully you're able to get a sense of what it means to be in a state of physical perfection. It is a, it is a wholeness of physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual being coming together as a complete entity, a complete representation, rep represent, representation of God itself. So let's look at it this way. Um, let's say that our spiritual understanding is not sufficient enough to, to do a thing, right? Um, do we establish an idea that it can't be done just because we can't conceive of the idea? I don't think I ever would have came up with the idea of sending a rocket to the moon, but somebody did. Somebody tapped into an alignment and an idea that is universal that allowed them individually and collectively as a team to play, to create a rocket, to design the propellant system and not only send it to the moon, but retrieve it back from the moon. And so that's what that's what we're dealing with. So if we're unable to conceive of a thing ourselves, let's not put limits on that. Let's 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 hold that perfect idea so that those who are in tune and in alignment with those ideas of physical perfection, whether they be for pain or going to the moon or correcting sight or for healing various diseases, let's allow that space. Let's not speak negative of it. Let's not hold and harbor some judgment or criticism because they came up with that idea and we didn't. Because in the end, if they figure it out, it's going to benefit everybody. It's going to benefit everybody. And so we begin to uh, repeat certain affirmations and, and we dwell on certain positive meanings and we begin to meditate upon the spiritual significance of allowing God to be God. And once we find that sweet spot, we know, we feel it. We feel the intensity in our body, the joy in our lives. And then once we do that, we repeat it, right? We, as the saying goes, if it's not broke, then, then, then let's not fix it, all right? Because that fix may break it. And so, so we begin to repeat these ideas of, 
uh, in consciousness. And we begin to understand that life is eternal and that we begin to learn the laws that govern the universe and these principles that, that are needed and used and exemplified every day of how things work. And so when we when we give a treatment, when we give a science of mind treatment, we must be clear that it is for a definite thing. It is for a definite thing. Now, this is what Ernest Holmes says. A prayer is a definite thing setting a universal law in motion which must be accepted. Right? It's, it's, a, it's an individual thing setting a law in motion. So if I'm trying to set the law of, of gravity in motion or electricity in motion, I can't be thinking that, well, you know, is it gravity or is it electricity I need or is it aerodynamic or is it flotation? I mean, I need to be clear about the law that I'm beginning to put into action. And so when we say this prayer, in these prayers, in these treatments, we don't want any sense of struggle. We don't want any sense of confusion. We want to be clear of the physical perfection of who and what we are. And we want to exemplify that and set that law into motion. And so thus, a treatment is a specific thing. When you are treating to neutralize any particular form of disease or anything of that matter, whether it's physical, mental, or emotional, our words should be spoken in such a way as to neutralize the belief or the condition that we are seeking to heal. That we are seeking to heal. And so when we do that, when we align ourselves with these laws of, of perfection, when we allow ourselves to be open and remain conscious and, 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 and cognizant of who and what we are, then life heals at the physical level, at the mental level, at the emotional level, and ultimately at the spiritual level when all of that is aligned. And so we just know that this is the perfection of God. We know that this is the life that we are looking for. This is the life that we were created to be. And through spiritual and metaphysical and physical practices, we become healed. Or we realize our healness by letting go of those things that don't serve us, that does not hold the idea. And so uh, here's a question, and then we'll close on this. In spiritual mind healing, do we what do we do to get rid of disease or discord? And I think the easiest thing to say is we turn away from the condition. We don't ignore it, but we turn away from it. We don't allow it to continue to permeate our mind so that we can't raise another thought or another idea. And so that is where we are. And so uh, our time is coming to an end. And uh, so if anyone has any last minute questions or last minute statements uh, uh, about anything, we're open for that right now. Um, and let's just see if we get anything. And if not, we will, we will, uh, uh, get ready to, to to send you on your way for the day. And But before we do that, we want to let you know that next week, Reverend Dr. Ken Gordon will be continuing this topic on more on the physical perfection, right? So, so please join him next week at this same time, 9 a.m. Mountain Time, to continue this idea of physical perfection, whether it's the body temple, or the environment we live in and begin to understand who and what we are in a more definite way, in a more sustainable way, in a way that allow us to, to activate the God within. And so uh, just want to say thank you for being here. Uh, please come back. Please invite others to, to join us. Please, if you, if, if you want to go back and, and see something, if you didn't have your textbook, 
Go watch the video. If you want to, if, if you got something and you think it can help some others, send them to the video or send them to the whole series. We started this on January 1 and we continue on our journey until the end of the year to go through the entire Science of Mind textbook. So we hope you're getting something here. We hope you're enjoying this and learning some new ways of looking at the textbook and, and the religious science perspective of life. And so um, thanks for being here and uh, just going to leave you with a couple of things. Have a great day.